Hey what's going on developers welcome back to the Nest.js full course. Today we are going to talk about how we can create one too many relationships in our database with TypeRM in our Nest.js application. So without further ado let's get into it. Okay this is the diagram of our database that we are going to create through this course. So now let's focus on the relationship between the user and the property. In this scenario each user can have multiple property but each property can belong to only one user. This is one too many relationship. So again, in a one too many relationship, consider we have a relationship between a parent and child. Each parent, which in this case is user table, can have a multiple child, which in this example is the property table. And also each child, the property table here, can belong to just one parent, which is the user table here. So again, each parent can have multiple child and each child can belong to just one parent. So now let's go to our Nest.js application and first create the user entity and then set up the one to many relationship between the user and the property entity. So let's do that. Okay, back to the Nest.js project. In the first step, we need to create the user entity. So here inside the entities directory, we're going to create another file called user.entity.ts. And then inside the file, as you know, we need to export a class for the user entity. So export class user then we need to mark it with the entity decorator from the type ORM. So the type ORM knows that this is going to be an entity and will create a table in our database and map this entity to that table. So back to our diagram, we can see our user has an ID, first name, last name, email, avatar URL, and also created at columns. So let's define these columns in our entity back to the VS code here. First, we need to define an ID, which is going to be a number and it's a primary key and auto increment primary key so we're going to mark it with the primary generated column okay now let's define the first name which is going to be a string and just mark it with the column decorator so the column decorator as you might remember from the previous video tells the type rm to create a field inside the user table named first name and set its type to a string type like varchar in our postgres database so let's just copy that and paste it here just turn it to last name okay back to our diagram we need to have an email avatar url also so we're gonna have an email which is going to be a string also mark it with the add column okay we don't want the semicolon here for the decorator and also we need to create a avatar url which is actually the url of the profile picture of the user and then we need to add a created add column in the user table which stores the entity's insertion date time so let's get back to vs code and create this column created at which is going to be of type date and we don't want to just mark it with the at column decorator because we want to database automatically set the entity's insertion time into this column so here we need to add another decorator create date column and this will not only create this column in our user table but automatically set the insertion time of an entity into this column so every time we're going to insert a new user into our database we don't need to set the value for this column the database will automatically set the value of this column which is the insertion time of the entity into this created at column in our user table and also we can have update date column which automatically set the update time of the entity into our database so every time we update an entity that column will be updated in our table in the database we can also have delete date column which actually set the time of the deletion actually soft deletion of the entity in our database so in the soft delete we don't physically delete the entity from our database we just mark it as deleted from our database but the data will be reserved in the table so that's it for the user table and now we are going to create the one-to-many relationship from this entity to the property entity so in order to create a one-to-many relationship with type ORM, first we need to go to the parent entity which in this case is the user entity so remember that the parent entity can have multiple child entity but each child can only belong to one parent 
so now we are on the user entity which is the parent table we need to create a column here that its type is a list of the child entities so here we're gonna have a properties field which its type is a list of the property entity and then we need to mark it with the one too many decorator so we just use the at one too many decorator from the type ORM and then just like the one-to-one -one relationship we need to pass the target callback which returns the type of the target entity which in this case is the property entity and then we can pass the reverse callback so the reverse callback takes an instance of the target entity which in this case is the property just a variable you can name it whatever you want but its type is going to be the type of the target automatically and then we just return the field inside the property entity which will refer to the parent field but in this case we haven't created this field in the child entity so i just put the user here but as you can see it has an error and that's because as i said we haven't created the user field inside the property table so that's it for the user table let's save this for now and let's go to the property entity and here we need to create a column that actually refers to the parent entity which is our user entity so we're going to create a field here that its type is going to be parent entity so here we're going to have the user and set its type to the user entity which is the parent and then we need to have many to one relationship which is actually the opposite side of the one to many so many to one from the type ORM and it just has the same parameter of the one to many the first is the target callback which return the type of the target which is user and the second one which is actually optional is the reverse callback it takes an instance of the target and then it returns the fields inside the target that refers to this entity which is the properties okay so let's have a recap here in the parent entity we use a one to many decorator and in the child entity we use a many to one decorator so that's it for the one to many relationships now let's run the server and go to the neon to see the user table and the relationship between the user table and the property entity so i open up the terminal and run the server Okay, as you can see it runs without any error now let's get to the neon console so let's go to the tables section and as you can see now we have a user table here as you can see we have the fields inside it and also we have a abstract field which is actually is not in our database physically it just shows the child properties of each user and if i go to the property table you can see it has the user field which as i said is an abstract field it is not physically inside this table it just shows the parent user of each property just like the property feature and also we have the user id field which is actually present inside the table physically it is the foreign key of this table which refers to the primary key of the user table so now let's create a record inside our user table just put my name okay my email leave the avatar url no and also we don't need to put the created at let's save the user so it complains about the null value inside the avatar url so let's put a something gibberish here okay it's just for test save the user you can see now we have a user inside our table as you can see the created at field is automatically set to the current time and now let's go to the property table and set the user id here to user id 2 now if i save the change and now if i click on the user you can see it is associated with the user that we have just created inside the user table and now we can go to the user table click on the properties you can see inside the properties it has the property with the id2 let's create another property inside the property table just put something random here and set the user id to id2 and just save that now if i go to the user table if i click on the property you can see it is associated with two properties so as you can see the user 2 can have multiple properties but each property can only be associated with just one user as you can see this property is associated with user 2 and also the second one is also associated with just one user which is 2 you can't put multiple user id for each property 
So this is the philosophy behind the one too many relationship. And also here, you can't put some user ID for a property that is not present in your database. For example, if you put user ID four for the second property, and if I save the change, you can see it complains about the violation of our foreign key, which means that the user ID four is not present inside the user table. So this is the goal of the foreign key. You should set it to a value that is present in your reference table. So let's change it back to two and you can see it is working without any error. So yeah, that's it for the one to many and many to one relationships in TypeORM within your Nest.js application. And one last thing that I should tell you here is that you can customize this user ID field, which is your foreign key. So let's get back to the Nest.js application here inside the child entity, which in this case is the property entity. You can use the joint column on your many to one column. So here you can put the joint column declarator and then you can pass a configuration object to it and you can specify the name here and set it to, for example, owner ID. Okay, let's save this and go to Neon console. Let's refresh. And as you can see here, now it says that user ID column does not exist. So if I refresh the page, now you can see the foreign key column is renamed to owner ID. So in this way, you can actually customize your foreign key column with the joint column decorator in your entity. And that's it for this episode. And in the next episode, we are going to talk about how we can create many to many relationships with TypeORM in our Nest.js application. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell in order to get informed about the next episode. And also if this video was helpful for you, please hit the like button because that makes me very happy and gives me more energy to move forward and create this comprehensive and free Nest.js course for you. So stay tuned for my next video and have a nice time. Bye bye.